Good afternoon, Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for June the 8th, 2016. Hope your Wednesday is going well. Let's take a look at what's going out there, going on out there today. Slow down a little bit here. In the Northwest Caribbean Sea, we have a little yellow X that has popped up. National Hurricane Center giving it a 10% chance of development. What is it? Yeah, it's just a weak area of low pressure surface trough in the region and you can see that here on the satellite picture from the tropical weather outlook map itself now let's take a look at it from a uh, animated gif perspective i guess you could say the western atlantic uh, you can see by the way the deep tropics out here closed for business right now any convective activity is over here in the western part of the basin and here's our area of disturbed weather Upper level winds not going to be favorable. A lot of dry air coming down from this area. So we really don't see much in the way of development potential. However, still have a pretty good stream of moisture coming in here to South Florida. And we have this front that's come in through the area pulling that moisture up. And so the periods of heavy rain will continue off and on for parts of South Florida. Other than that, no big deal from this system in terms of tropical storm formation. In the Pacific, the very last uh, advisory, I can't even pull it up now because it doesn't exist anymore. Tropical Depression 1, there it is, at least it's on this map, died out over the inland areas of the Gulf of Tehuantepec in extreme southeast Mexico, southern Mexico, and that'll be it for this system. It's interesting, we have had a grand total of zero named storms in the Pacific yet, in the Eastern Pacific. Uh, the first one would be Agatha. Uh, by the time we got to mid-month last year in June, we were already up to several powerful hurricanes in the Eastern Pacific, and we have zero of anything except this one measly depression that developed down here so far. What does that mean? Well, usually when the Pacific is quiet, the Atlantic tries to come to life, and we certainly have seen that recently with the addition of Bonnie and Colin, two tropical storms. Neither of them had tropical origins. We didn't see a tropical wave come across the Atlantic and develop into Bonnie or Colin. They developed from other systems uh, that had already been pre-existing over here in the western part of the basin. They still count, don't get me wrong, but until we see something come out of this area, uh, in June and head towards the west or whatever, I wouldn't put too, put too much into the fact that we've had three named storms already in 2016. Remember Alex, Hurricane Alex was a freak occurrence and most of its energy really got going once it got up here in the subtropics back in January of all months. So this is what it looks like again for the first 10 days of the hurricane season. Most of the development area is right where we would expect in the western parts of the Atlantic Basin and specifically in the Western Caribbean. But then we do have quite a cluster here in the Eastern Pacific and yet we have had nothing so far this year named storms or hurricanes, only a tropical depression. Now this is interesting as we sort of look at the season ahead. We are in the hurricane season but we can still look ahead and look at the puzzle pieces that should shape things to come and of course one of those would be the sea surface temperature anomaly is what we call the departures from normal. And clearly we can see this cold anomaly showing up here in the tropical Pacific. Also, this colder water down here just south and west of the Baja. Yeah, it's still pretty warm compared to average in the southeast Pacific. But it's not as warm as it could be overall for that region, that's for sure. Where on the other hand, the Atlantic Basin here, the main development region, Definitely warmer than normal. This sticks out like a sore thumb, but this is up in the subtropics. But boy, the northwest Atlantic, very warm. Caribbean warmer than average and almost the entire Gulf. Bottom line, there is a lot of energy being stored up in the Atlantic Basin right now. And that is showing up as these anomalies, these positive anomalies. You can see down here on the chart uh, that anything on the right-hand side of the scale is a positive anomaly negative for those of us that live on the coast. I, I think we're going to need to begin to watch this closely as time wears on because it's warmer than it should be out there and there's a lot more available energy. And furthermore, 
look at this right off the Iberian Peninsula where it has been cold is starting to warm up a little bit yes we still have this but it has not made inroads and come down and spread out across the main development region which I saw uh, some people suggesting that it could do that if we had strong high pressure sitting up here uh, the so-called subtropical ridge uh, being stronger than normal was supposed to do that and it didn't clearly you can see very warm anomalies and it's even warmed up off the Iberian Peninsula here to a little bit above the long-term average so interesting going on's out there to be sure um, not so good ramifications if uh, I may say so myself. I see things that could be a problem for later on, so I wanted to point them out. Uh, and another one of these issues that we're looking at, uh, the La Nina that's coming on, I mean, this is absolutely phenomenal. Look at that uh, cold anomaly right there, and we can kind of trace it down. How many shades of blue uh, do we have here? And there's one, two, three, four, and then this one in here is five. Let me take that away so you can see that is a different color, right? So one, two, three, four, five. So that would take us to about one degree, two degree, three degree, four degree, five degrees Celsius. Between four and five degrees Celsius below normal in the uh, tropical Pacific at a little under 100 meters below the surface. And that is absolutely incredible. This is as cold as the El Nino was warm, if that makes sense. And you see that the last couple of islands of warmth sitting in here, the little, little tiny one there. Folks, this is very important because it's going to do uh, a number on the global tropical cyclone uh, occurrences. The Pacific should be slower. The Atlantic Basin, basin should be busier. And it's going to change the weather patterns when you get this kind of a jolt to the system on the cold side very similar to what we have with El Nino on the warm side you just can't shock the system like that without there being some substantial ripple effects downstream from there and it takes several months to a couple of years for those to manifest themselves but this is really impressive here this uh, cold anomaly in the Pacific actual sea surface temperatures the entire Gulf of Mexico nice and warm overall so if you need to go boating or do anything else along our wonderful beaches here and even down into Mexico some of these water temperatures on the western side of the Yucatan Peninsula 29 and 30 degrees Celsius uh, a little too warm for me but hey anything above 75 and especially 80 and I am a happy guy I'll get in that no problem and we're close to that here along the Carolina coast almost 80 degrees here probably 78 79 if you're lucky right off of the Wrightsville Beach, Atlantic Beach area, uh, getting close to that as well. Down the coast, Charleston, and then into the Georgia beaches, into Florida, of course, very warm already, 80, 81 degrees in the surf. And the Gulf Stream, very prominent right now. And remember, most of this region of the Atlantic Basin is running well above the long-term average. We can go back to that graphic, and you can see that showing up right here. Look at that. That's very, very impressive and not a good sign if we had hurricane activity coming up the coast taking advantage of that of course that's still if it's going to happen a couple of months away at, at the least more likely mid-august through september and october we can worry about that then now, one thing i wanted to point out a couple of uh awesome websites out there that i follow and that i am a member of one of those would be storm2k.org They've been around for quite a few years, uh, thousands of members. It's free, of course, and uh, some of them are professional uh, meteorologists, and they post interesting information from time to time, and we all like to follow that. kind of gives you the inside track to things that are going on in the business. And I wanted to point this one out right here from uh, username weatherman57. I will not divulge who this is. I know who it is, but I think out of professional courtesy I won't say who it is or who they work for if you know already that's fine but I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not at liberty to say it okay it's not my place but weatherman 57 a professional meteorologist that's what this blue color that I highlighted indicates and so uh, this gentleman has uh, knowledge and expertise above 
you know, sort of lay people, I guess you would say. And with that being said, uh, he posted just a little while ago today that the new ECMWF seasonal forecast is in. And between June and November, it's going with 11 and a half more named storms. I guess you could say probably down to nine and a half since we've already had a couple. I don't know if it took into account uh, Bonnie and Colin, but nevertheless, 8.9 hurricanes and about a 90% of normal ACE index. And furthermore, he comments uh, that the August through October sea level pressures not nearly as high as the May forecast from the ECMWF and the rainfall normal across the tropics, whereas before the European seasonal forecast was showing higher pressure in the deep tropics, lower than normal rainfall, and just kind of a an average season. But this information that came out today indicating the chance that it could be busier than an average season. Then he added uh, just a little while ago here, 1.19 p.m. Central Time, that it's uh, forecasting nine hurricanes, etc., which suggests that the hurricanes are short track, perhaps forming closer to land. When did we see that last substantially? Well, that was 2005. None of the big hurricanes that hit the United States in 2005 came from this region right here. We didn't have any of them that tracked all the way across and hit the United States. Katrina had its origins down here and went in like that. Rita came through here and went like that. Uh, Wilma, late season, formed in the Western Caribbean. And then there were, of course, others. And I'm not saying this will be like 2005. I'm just saying this reminds me of that year's setup where the storms formed close to land, giving us little lead time. We didn't have a week to see it coming like 04. We saw Ivan coming from a week to 10 days away. Or even 2008 was a long track season, so to speak, with Hurricane Ike that traveled 3,000 plus miles from the tropical Atlantic to make landfall over Galveston Island. And so you have all this time to watch it. Well, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case this year. There could still be one or two, you know, deep tropic hurricanes that makes their way over to the U.S. We'll have to see. But my point as I wrap this up, more information coming in now that indicates that the season will be a little bit busier uh, than maybe originally thought. So we'll have to see in August when the release of new forecast data comes out from Colorado State and the NOAA outlook gets updated again if in fact they raise their forecast numbers and for those who say that they don't matter well they don't matter in terms of telling you who's gonna be hit that's certainly for sure but if you have more bullets in the gun I think you know where I'm going with this you have a better chance yeah alright so we just have to be mindful of this no hype or sensationalism about it these are the facts the European seasonal model a very well regarded um, climate model if you will and it's indicating a higher than normal chance of a busier season than we had originally thought uh, within the last couple of months so just take that you know as, with a grain of salt right and if you think well maybe I'll do a little extra preparedness hey you won't be worse off for it it'll actually be an improvement so take it for that all right have a good rest of your Wednesday. I am done. Mark out of HurricaneTrack.com as always. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow.